Hello Wastelanders, Wanderer here, welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. So, just got done talking to Swank in the last episode. Gonna be heading upstairs and checking out Benny's room. We got Benny's room key and permission from Swank to go and check it out after we let him in on what was going on. I'm still a little bit worried that uh, he may try to betray us, but I guess we'll see. So I do believe this would be Benny's suite right here. I do have a key for it, so I'm assuming we can get in here. Get in here, Veronica. And then I'm gonna shut the door. Come on, hurry up, get in here. Eddie, you too, get in here. Get in here, guys. Okay, didn't lose karma there, so I'm assuming not that big of a deal. Oh! Um... That's a robot over there. Okay, I'm gonna finish exploring this before I go over there. Yes, man, huh? Hey! Hi there! Good to meet you! What can I do for you today? Uh, what are you doing here? Good question! My function is to monitor Mr. House's data network and decode his encrypted transmissions. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a PDQ-88B Securitron, but you can call me Yes Man. Yes, man. What kind of name is that? It's what Benny always called me. Probably because I'm programmed to be so helpful. Um, have you seen Benny? He was around here not too long ago. He's probably down on the casino floor now. You can wait for him here if you like. I'm incapable of asking you to leave. Benny stole a platinum chip from me. Do you know what it's for? Sure. Benny had me look at it a bunch of times. It's a data storage device, kind of like a holotape, but a lot more advanced. As for what's on it, well, some of Mr. House's data transmissions made it sound like the chip could upgrade his defenses somehow. That's just a guess, though. The chip's a proprietary format. You need special hardware to read the data on it. There are two locations with non-standard hardware on the network, the Lucky 38 and an underground facility at Fortification Hill. I'd look there! Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Yes Man. What is Benny planning to do with the chip? Oh! He wants to kill Mr. House and use the platinum chip to copy my neurocomputational matrix onto the Lucky 38's mainframe. That should give me control over all Mr. House's defenses. Most prominently, his Securitrons! And then I just do what Benny tells me. Easy peasy! You're very forthcoming with that information. I was programmed to be helpful and answer any questions I was asked. I guess nobody bothered to restrict who I answer questions for. That was probably pretty dumb, huh? Yeah, probably pretty dumb. What if, uh, I wanted to take over New Vegas instead of Benny? Then I'd have to help you. I mean, it seems pretty obvious Benny wouldn't want me to, but hey, not my fault I can't say no. <laughs> this is great. What are the details of the plan? Again, goal number one is to eliminate Mr. House and install my neurocomputational matrix on the Lucky 38's mainframe. Given how you're a new arrival, I also recommend that you get to know some of the region's tribes, so you can decide how you feel about them. By the time you finished up all of that, the Legion should be close to attacking Hoover Dam, and we'll execute the last phase of the plan. Say Mr. House was going to suffer an accident, how would that happen? It makes me feel really dumb to admit this, but I don't actually know. I've never been inside the Lucky 38. No one has. Mr. House is in there, though. It's the central node of his entire network. I've been inside there. You have? Wow, that's amazing. You can murder Mr. House whenever you want. I mean, Benny was always scheming about how he was going to get into the Lucky 38, but you already took care of that. Wow. The other thing you're going to need is the Platinum Chip. You know, the one Benny killed a courier for over near Good Springs. What do you know about the courier Benny shot? I knew he was carrying the Platinum Chip, and I knew right where Benny should wait for him. That's why Benny put me here, to monitor Mr. House's data transmissions. They're all encrypted, of course, but I'm quite a decryptor. Did you know that Mr. House spent 812,545 caps hiring salvage teams to find the platinum chip? 
just in the last year alone? Of course you didn't. Or that there were seven couriers, but six of them were carrying junk. How about their exact route and the mercenary teams that screened them? I knew all that. Pretty smart, huh? Yep, pretty smart. I am the courier, Benny Shot. <laughs> I know that's not true, because you still have a head. Uh, I'm serious. <laughs> that's not funny, you getting shot in the head. I really shouldn't have taken so much pride in how I set that up, huh? I feel really bad right now. Where is the platinum chip? Benny carries it with him at all times. I think he's paranoid that someone might want to take it from him. The platinum chip is the key to overriding and exploiting Mr. House's defenses. Did I just say exploiting? That's not a very nice word. Once I get the chip, what then? I'd take it straight to Mr. House if I were you. He'll think you're helping him out. Then, when he's not looking, kerpow! The big question is whether to give him the chip before you do him in. He's the one who'll know exactly what to do with it after all. He might upgrade his defensive capabilities right away, or even unlock new ones. But then those defensive upgrades might make it harder for you to finish him off. Hard to say. It's up to you. Let me know when it's done and I'll roll over to the Lucky 38. If I'm right about the chip, I should be able to install myself on House's mainframe. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna help you accomplish so much, whether I want to or not. So about these tribes, I should ask them if they'll support an independent Vegas? Oh no, I didn't mean that. Who needs their support? The Securitrons will be all the support you need. What I meant is, you should get to know these tribes and decide which ones you like and which you don't. You know, shape the future of Vegas. Choose your neighbors. If you like a tribe, leave it alone. Or, if a tribe is nasty or going to be a problem, go ahead and exterminate it. It's whatever you want to do. Which tribe should I get to know? There's a bunch. Some of them you've already met, like the chairman, for instance. I think you should visit the other families on this strip, the Omertas and the White Glove Society, so you know what makes them tick. And there are some important groups farther from the strip, too, like the Boomers, the Great Khans, and the Brotherhood of Steel. Let's talk about the tribes I should get to know. Of course, ask away. What do you know about the Boomers? They must be a really nasty people. I haven't heard a single good thing about them. They fire artillery on anyone who comes near their settlement at Nellis Air Force Base. Talk about rude. If they can be convinced to fire those big cannons at the Legion or NCR though, well, that'd be neat, wouldn't it? That would be neat. I'll get back to you about the Boomers. I want to talk to them first. Take all the time you need. Anything else I can help with? Uh, tell me what you know about the Great Cons. The Cons are just... They're a dirty people. They live in tents like animals, and they're very rude. They've been kicked around a lot, but no one's finished them off. Not yet, anyway. How have the Cons been kicked about? They were one of the tribes the three families pushed out of Vegas. A whole bunch got killed. So they settled at Bitter Springs, but they kept being so obnoxious, the NCR had to kill a whole bunch more of them. So then, they settled at Red Rock Canyon. There's just no getting rid of them. Okay, I need to take some more time with the cons. You set the pace. Anything else I can help with? What do you know about the Omertas? Hmm. I remember that Benny used to pay a receptionist at Gamora for information. Maybe she knows something. Okay, you know anything else about the Omertas? Just that Benny didn't like them. He talked on and on about how they couldn't be trusted. And this is coming from Benny. He hated their casino, said it was tacky, and he thought they were up to something, because he said they always are. Well, they do have dead hookers in rooms full of blood with meat hooks and knives and all kinds of other things going on over there. I can understand why they didn't like them, to be honest. Um, I'll check into the Omerta some more, though, before I make a decision. Whenever you get around to it, we'll be just fine. 
Anything else I can help with? Uh, what do you know about the White Glove Society? From what I understand, they're perfectly delightful. They're cultured, clean, and super polite. Benny didn't like them, though. He said they were creepy. Everyone says that. I'll let you know when I'm done evaluating the White Glove Society. Don't hurry on my account. I'm the one with a flexible schedule. Anything else I can help with? Uh, what do you know about the Brotherhood of Steel? They go around in big suits of power armor, and they have lots of energy weapons. But there's a downside. They just have a thing about technology. They think it should all be theirs. If someone else has it, they get mad. All I'm saying is, not much of a chance they'll accept a Vegas that polices itself with robots. I'm not ready to decide what to do with the Brotherhood quite yet. No rush. Take your time. Anything else I can help with? I'd like to talk with Veronica about that, obviously. Okay, let's talk about something else. Whatever you say. So, Benny reprogrammed you all by himself? Oh, he had some help. A lady friend of his. She said something about living in a fort over in Freeside. But that's all I remember. Fort Mormon? Probably someone over at the Followers? Said something about a bunker at the fort? Right! It's one of two locations on Mr. House's network with non-standard hardware. My guess is it has a reader that can decode the chip. And who knows what else, maybe a giant robot or something. Okay, I'll go check it out. Neat. Let me know what you find out. Wild card, you and what army, okay? Um, what is this place back here? This is Benny's workshop. When the tops got renovated, he had this half of the floor blocked off for his own use. I guess you could say it's my entire world. I don't think I've ever left this room, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. Okay, uh, goodbye, yes man. Come back later if you need anything. Broken terminal and broken terminal. I don't think I can actually use these. There's a tape drive connection. But I can't actually use it. Same thing for this one, I guess. Okay, dummy terminal inactive. Alright, that's fine. Another broken terminal. Nothing here either. Okay, got a door back here as well. Wow. So this is the part that's not been renovated back here. Is it literally just a big empty hallway? Sure is what it seems like. It's a door I can't open. 1470. And there is a... Oh, elevator sub-basement. Requires a key, though. I bet Benny has the key, I'm sure. Okay, well, we went upstairs. We talked to Yes Man. Um, gosh, now I really have a lot of thinking to do about what I want to do with this quest. I mean, that's quite a big decision we can make here. So let's see. So I can go and find Mr. House's hidden bunker, use it to, once I get the chip, I can use it to activate the chip and do whatever it does and take over Vegas for myself. I could kill Mr. House and just be the ruler of New Vegas, but then I have to decide who goes and who stays and all that kind of stuff too. I think an independent Vegas is the best way to go here. I'm just not sure if I want to be the one to rule it. I think Mr. House does an okay job as is, although um, the gambling and vice and stuff, there's things that could be better here, is what I'm saying. And is it really a good idea to give Mr. House all that power? He is a rather shady character, but he seems to be somewhat of a benevolent dictator. I don't feel that he's evil necessarily. I think he wants what is best for the people of Vegas in general, but he definitely wants to stay in power. So we should try to find Benny around here somewhere. That's him right over there, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Let's get a save in here. Ha, ah, what do we do with Benny? What do we do? I think you have to die, Benny. Keep those hands where I can see him. I dig. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello. 
The guy everyone saw go in the Lucky 38, that was you? Oh, shit. Mr. House wants the chip, Benny. Hand it over. You don't want to do that, baby. Not without hearing what I gotta say first. What say you and me cash out? Go somewhere as more private-like. Any questions you got, I'll answer. All right. He is pretty convincing. What do you have in mind? To start, I'll comp you the presidential. Best suite in the house. You deserve a taste of the VIP lifestyle. I'll hang out down here for a while to make everything look business as usual, then come to you. Any questions you got, I'll answer. Guaranteed. All right, Benny. Two conditions. Lose the bodyguards, and we both go to the suite right now. If that's what it takes to win your trust, that's what it takes. Follow me. This crazy slang. This place is the beast. Nothing you can do to actually earn my trust, Benny. You're probably getting a laser bolt in the head when we're done talking. Hello. No sudden moves. Now that you and me's got some privacy, I gotta ask, how is it that you're still living? A Securitron dug me up and a dock in Good Springs did the rest. House was on to me from word go? I thought I was being so clever. Once you were vertical, how'd you track me down? You dropped something in Boulder City. To think I deemed that flint box my lucky charm. Oh, the irony. I guess that's enough scratching around at first base. Tell me. Which way is the wind gonna blow? I've got questions. A bunch of them. You got questions? I got answers. First things first, tell me about the chip. It's the house edge, baby. Literally. It's what Mr. House needs to stack the odds in his favor. How's it work? It's some kind of data storage device, Dig. So it's the data on the chip that's platinum, not the chip itself. Trouble is, the chip don't fit any computer, I've found. Must require special hardware. What does it do? It has something to do with the Securitrons. I know that much. Upgrades their hitting power, gives them heft. Might be slightly useful if you're looking to defend the Strip from Caesar's Legion or the NCR. Or maybe both. The chip belongs to me. Hand it over. Baby, ease off the gas. The chip belongs in the hands of someone who can use it. As in me, not you. You'll get a piece of the action and a sweet one. But the chip sticks with me. What's your offer? You help me and before long the chairman will rule all of Vegas, Dig. With enough robot muscle to back it up. You'll get a sweet juicy cut of that action. But until that day comes, I'll keep you on retainer and pay bonuses for special missions. How's that sound? Answers first, Benny, then I'll decide. How else can I clue you in? Tell me about the different factions gunning for Vegas. Yeah, it's a tricky world out there. I'll tell it to you straight. Mr. House? A good cat to swing with, or was, until he stopped mewing. It was House's big idea to resurrect the Strip. He recruited the three families as muscle, showed us how to set up casinos, negotiated with the NCR. None of this in person, mind you. Did all of his talking through those Securitrons of his. But lately, the silence is deafening. The robots collect House's share of the take every week, and life goes on. Ain't exactly what I'd call leadership. What makes a chairman so special? We're the definition of cool, baby. We know how to swing. Folks come to us to learn how to enjoy themselves. Of the three families, we're the only ones with the heart and savoir faire to run the strip on our own. The Omertas? A tribe of finks. Every single one of them is a degenerate. Mark my words, they're playing an angle. How do I know? They always are. Degenerates, huh? I've heard other people use that word. What about the White Glove Society? Personally, they give me the heebie-jeebies. There's such a thing as being too polite, if I may this, my pleasure that. Don't get me wrong, that resort of theirs is strictly ring-a-ding. But my guts say, don't go in the basement. What about the NCR? A nation of meddlers trying to muscle in on our action. Well, we got muscles too. And smarts, besides. Only reason the NCR hasn't busted up our scene is they're a little afraid of Mr. House, and a lot afraid of Caesar. If the NCR beats the Legion at Hoover Dam, they'll turn on us and claim the Strip. And we don't have the muscle to beat them. Not yet. Meanwhile, they're all that's keeping Caesar's Legion at bay. 
Plus, NCR soldiers and citizens are our best customers. It's complicated. And what about Caesar's Legion? Worst of the worst. A tribe of degenerate losers led by a creep. They crucify people for kicks, slaughter whole towns. The NCR beat them at the dam three years ago, but that didn't stop them. They spent the meanwhile gathering strength. They're going to try to take the dam again real soon. And if they do, Vegas as we know it will cease to exist. Okay, let's talk about something else. Something else you wanted to know? Help me understand this scheme of yours. Broad strokes, change in management. The Securitrons are where it's at. I need a way to control them and a way to beef up their hitting power. I get those two ducks in a row, Vegas can defend itself versus all comers. NCR, Caesar's Legion, it won't matter. And what makes you think you can succeed? Baby, the odds may look long, but that's just because we ain't done rigging them. I won't toss the dice until we are. I've gleaned a lot working with Mr. House. He was a good cat to swing with. I still got a lot to learn, but it's it's coming together. And you're willing to commit murder to make this happen? Baby, do you not understand the level of game here? What I did to you was rotten. But if you think House, the NCR, or Caesar won't kill to put Vegas in their pocket, I really did blow out your brains. The ruthlessness of others is no excuse, Benny. It was a time I would have agreed with you, but this, it's too big. It affects too many people. I can't get hung up on those details. What's the deal with your secret workshop and Yes Man friend? You really weren't supposed to talk to him. All right. So, he used to be a Securitron on patrol, square as the rest, until I gave him a Mickey in the shape of a pulse grenade. Once he was on the nod, I yanked some wires and dragged him up to the workshop. I had... some help, you see. Gal named Emily, one of the followers over in Freeside, a real whiz when it comes to things technical. She programmed his personality. Once Yes Man was hooked back into House's data network, I started learning a lot more about what he was up to, Dig. Like where and when to find you. What are you offering? Like I said, once the chairman are running Vegas, you'll get a percentage. Until then, I'll pay you a retainer and bonuses for special missions. There's no way in hell, guys. There's no way in hell I can trust Benny. If I were him, I wouldn't trust me either. I mean, he tried to kill me. He'd always be a loose can. He'd always be someone that I'd be afraid of. I'll never trust you, Benny. No thanks. I know. You figured me for a creep. It's your prerogative. If you change your mind, come find me on the casino floor. In the meantime, the presidential is yours whenever you want it. Adios. So, you're saying I can't... I don't get the chip here. Something else you wanted to know? I still want that chip, Benny. Okay, um, the only way to get the chip is to kill Benny. I don't trust Benny. I don't know if I trust Mr. House yet, but I don't trust Mr. Benny. Even with his sad eyes, he's looking at me right now. You gotta go, Benny. You gotta go, man. It's a chip or you, and you're not willing to part with the chip unless you die, so sorry. Guess I should have seen that coming. Trouble. Oh, <laughs> I guess I should put my weapon on, huh? Come on! Get him, Veronica. No dice, Benny, no dice, man. Maria! Unique 9mm there. So the Platinum Chip, the Top Presidential Sweet Key, and Benny's Sweet Key, and Benny's Suit. Very nice. And a wall safe here. Alright, well, you guys knew how it was going to end. I was not going to let Benny walk for what he did. Um, it's interesting that you can side with him, and maybe, ironically, maybe he would be the best person to lead the strip. Maybe he would be. But I'd have to put past the fact that he was willing to murder me for that objective. Me, an innocent bystander. Maybe he's right, the stakes are very high, but I still cannot look past that. It's just wrong. Like I said, you know, I'm willing to steal to achieve my goals. I'm willing to do a lot of things, but murdering innocents is not one of them. Alright, let's get back to the main floor. Hopefully, I don't think people will be upset with me. I don't have to kill the bodyguards. Just had to kill Benny, which is what I wanted, just to kill Benny. Uh, we got answers. We know what the chip is for. It's going to upgrade stuff. Apparently, the Securitrons give them more firepower to give Mr. House the edge he would need to take over. 
All right, guys, so I have a lot to do here. I have a lot to figure out. Before I go back to Mr. House, I'm gonna go and talk to all the tribes and see whether or not I like them, but I am I, I don't think that just straight up murdering them is the way to go. Let me talk to Swank Hello. here as well. You're back. Find anything? Yeah, he's dead. Hmm. Huh. Guess that makes me the boss. <laughs> Ring-a-ding. <laughs> Works out for you good, Swank. All right, see ya, Swank. Yeah, see ya, kid. All right, let's head out. The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Your crimes against the Legion, including the death of the fearless Wulpes and Kulta, are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy again. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. How'd you find me here? I am one of Kaisar's frumentari, an infiltrator, a spy. You were not difficult to track. Why does Kaisar want to see me? Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The cursor Lucullus will be waiting. Kaisar awaits. Okay, yet another quest. Wow. So we've got a ton of stuff to do. We have to go over to the Ultralux and talk to them and see what they're all about. The White Glove Society. Those creepy bastards, apparently. We have to go and talk to the people in uh, the canyon over at Red Rock Canyon and uh, see about them, the Great Khans over there. Should also go over to the actual Bitter Springs encampment here and see what's up there. Haven't gone there yet. I have to go and talk to Nellis Air Force Base again to see where they stand on the stuff. Um, there is the fort. I guess we go through Nelson and go up north into here. Is that how we get there? I'm not entirely sure. All right, guys. So while we're here, let's go ahead and check out the Ultra Lux and see what they are all about. The White Glove Society. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? That is one creepy mask. Could I trouble you to blow it out your ass? I'm gonna keep my holdout weapons, but uh, sure, here you go. My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. Uh, where'd you take my weapon? They'll be handled with the utmost security in our bank. They better be. All right. Adieu. That mask is creepy as hell. Does everyone have masks on? No, just Morning. the people that are running the place. Oh, here's uh, Heck Gunderson, the jerk we're supposed to talk to for uh, that other guy. Let's see what he has to say. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? Uh, no, I have not. <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches. But I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. Hmm. Here in the White Glove or whatever this place is called... Um, so you're a rancher, eh? Yep. Got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one ranch, but land was easy to grab before the soldiers moved in. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. Why is your bodyguard allowed to have a gun? Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me, they got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success. Might want to take a swipe at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. Then none of this would have happened. So who lost your son? My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. 
course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. What business did you have here at the hotel? That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. Why would that not be as welcome, I wonder? Uh, what did you say about the White Glove? That's what they call themselves, the folk that run this place. They're the ones dressed all fancy with their bow ties and shiny dresses. Some of them got masks, too. Real hard to trust folks like that. A couple of them show their faces, and that's who I do my business with. I don't talk to none of the other ones. Let me help find your son. I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. Okay, see ya, heck. I'll be here. So there's no options to talk to him about what he has done to the other ranchers. There's always a possibility they could be in on it, too, I don't know. But, um, first things first, let's do some gambling, eh? Go and find the person that does the chips here and see how much we can get out of this place. Alright, so I'm all done gambling. Um, how many caps am I at now? I've cleared out every casino so far. 82,000. Pretty good, I'd say. So, let's see. This is the Gourmand at the Ultralux. This is fine dining. How do you do? Uh, hi there, Majori. Marjorie. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. Do you... It's obvious she works here, but do you work here, Marjorie? I do, but one can hardly call it work. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultra Lux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. Oh, you're the founder, I see. Um, I'm looking for someone who went missing here recently. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. Um, that's not what I was asking about. The White Glove Society used to eat human flesh? Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. It's okay, Marjorie. I eat people too. You can tell me the truth. You disgust me. How dare you say such a filthy thing in my establishment? I ought to have you arrested. You'll kindly mind your tongue or we shan't speak any further. Okay, didn't work. Darn. Um, who did you talk to about the disappearance? There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. Okay, could I talk to that investigator? Why, yes, I think so, if he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. Actually, I'm investigating someone else, a man, and he just recently went missing. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. 
Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Heck, Gunderson said he was here to talk business with you. What business? What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed Brahmin steak into a delicacy. He really is a genius. Everyone wants it. But a delicacy is just that. Delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. That is completely stupid, Marjorie. Uh, I'll see ya. Ta-ta. Okay, there's definitely some shady stuff going on in here, man. Alrighty, can I cannot go back here unless I lockpick it and get back there illegally. I don't know if I want to do that quite yet. Let's go back out and look around back here a bit more. So here we have the Ultralux bathhouse. Well, this is quite nice. Really quite nice. Just seeing if there's anyone I can talk to around here. Got a sauna and a spa here. Okay, so no one I can talk to in here. This is out of order for some reason. Where does this go over here? Oh, the hotel room's okay. Maybe we'll find Veronica a fancy dress around here somewhere. A door to Bon Vivant Suite. Okay. These are very, very nice uh, sinks and bathtubs and stuff. Actually, clean. Okay, let's check out the uh, Bon Vivant Suite. Oh, it requires a key. All right. Cannot get in there without the actual key. Let's talk to Mortimer again. How may I be of service, sir? Uh, Marjorie said you gave a free room to a private investigator. Private investigator? Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Uh, yes, I have some critical information for him. Good. I hope that young man gets some closure after all he's been through. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. I've heard your group dines on human flesh. Ah, yes. I've heard that one too. Jealous people say such nasty things. I feel sorry for them. Uh, I too know what it is like to feel the craving. How can I support your cause? Good. And you know what it is to be discreet in matters of nutrition. Perhaps you can help me. I'm in a bind. I've been planning an exquisite society dinner, but there's a bit of a problem with the main course. He's got a powerful and temperamental father. I see. Um, the main course is a person? Yes. The wrong person. We scouted the right one for weeks. The heir to a mercantile empire. Sort of a black sheep. He cut ties with his family and left their estate to wander. He was ideal. Corn-fed and well-to-do. But no one to miss him if he were to disappear. Unfortunately, the trap my subordinate set for him failed. And as he escaped, he saw their faces. Now he's wary. So, what did you do? I asked for a last-minute replacement, and they stole the son of the most dangerous Brahmin baron in New Vegas while he stayed at this very hotel. Needless to say, this could be a disaster if things aren't put back the way they should be. And I still need somebody reputable to serve for dinner. Strictly speaking, we're no longer allowed to eat people, but I'm hoping the right person and preparation might sway Marjorie to see things my way. Okay, tell me what I need to do. I need a replacement, and I need the boy taken care of. The replacement must be healthy and well-bred. 
One can't very well make steak from gristle. With so little time, we'll have to go after our original choice, Carlisle St. Clair. He lives in a shack north of here. For freshness, we need him alive. If you could send him here or knock him out with this and drag him into the dumpster next to his house, we can do the rest. And what about the boy you kidnapped? Ted Gunderson is his name. It would be simplest if we could convince him this was all an unfortunate misunderstanding. But if he won't listen, we can't very well let him go. He'll have to be slaughtered and served. Then we wouldn't need the replacement. But you would need to deal with his father, Heck. Perhaps if you could smear some of Ted's blood around his father's hotel room, you could frame him. Hmm, couldn't Heck just claim intruders killed his son? No. Everyone he meets, he tells the same story. That his son disappeared from the casino, not from his room. He'll look guilty. <laughs> oh, I can send... I can send Veronica to be the replacement meal. <laughs> Damn, this game is sick and twisted. Oh my gosh, okay. I'll do as you proposed. Where do I find Ted Gunderson? Splendid, splendid. The boy is being held in the kitchen beneath the gourmand. Here are some keys that will allow you access to him. The elder Gunderson is staying in our penthouse. I understand he's hired security, so be careful if you go up there. And our Mr. St. Clair resides to the north. He rarely strays far from his house, and he surrounded it with booby traps. Okay. Goodbye, Mortimer. Indeed. You sick bastard. Okay, so I think first stop will be to go and talk to Marjorie. I'm very glad I tried that dialogue option now. I was hoping for a speech check with Marjorie that might let me, but apparently she's not in on this. She doesn't know about it. So I can go up to the penthouse, uh, but I think first... Oh, Chauncey. have not talked to Chauncey. Good day. Uh, why is everyone around here dressed up and wearing masks? Those are all members of the White Glove Society. Our founder Marjorie gave us all a dress code. There's only one rule to it. In her words, we must dress in such a way that no one can be said to have dressed better than us. As for the masks, I'm not allowed to tell you. We're sworn to secrecy. Actually, that's not true. That's just what we're supposed to say. I think Marjorie likes them for the mystery they create and the way they make it clear that we're different from everyone else. But you didn't hear that from me. So, where is your mask? Mm, must have forgotten to put it on. How embarrassing. Okay, see ya, Chauncey. Farewell. Okay, so let's go back. I want to clue Marjorie in on this because I think she may... She might be able to put a stop to it and find a resolution that will keep everybody happy. So that requires us to go over to the uh, gourmand. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. Okay, no options here for talking to her. All right, so I want to talk to the investigator first and see what his ideas are. So let's go up to uh, the hotel rooms and talk to him. Okay, so this should be it, maybe? Nope, not this one. What about this one? There we go. Oh! The investigator is dead. Trouble. Come in quick. Uh oh. Damn it, Veronica. There we go. White glove, society, attire, a dress cane, and a mask. One for each of me and Veronica. Sorry, guys. You'll, you'll be okay now. They must have spent a fortune renovating this place. Yep, that's what I'd say, too, if I was cowering in fear. Okay, so here is the invent investigator, Jay Barnes, and uh, a matchbook. Shame I can't take his outfit. It looks kind of cool. Meet with the investigator's contact in the Ultralux steam room at 4 p.m. Okay, there's a note in there, apparently, about what I'm supposed to do. Maybe we can find both the bride... And, uh, Ted Gunderson. Let's go back to the steam room then, and, uh, it is 2.33 p.m., so we just have to wait for a little bit, and we should meet them there. Okay, oh, Chauncey is the, uh, investigator's person he's talking to. Okay. Who are you? I'm just looking for someone who went missing. So was the man I'm supposed to be meeting here. Where is he? 
I could lie or I could say he's dead. Let's just say he's dead. Oh my goodness, me. They must know he was talking to someone on the inside. They'll be watching everyone closer now. I knew this was a mistake. What were you supposed to discuss here? The girl. The one who disappeared. I know what happened to her. And how do you know what happened to the girl? Because I distracted her fiancé while they took her. Well, I'm not proud of it, but I had to. They could see I was having second thoughts. Some of the white gloves began meeting privately a while back, started talking about how we'd lost our identity. I started attending because I thought it was about changing our politics. Then they started talking about returning to the old ways, and there was no way out. They'd kill me for the things I heard them say. And who are you afraid of? Mortimer. If he realizes it was me the investigator was planning to meet, he'll have me killed. So Mortimer is behind disappearances? Yes. The White Glove Society strictly forbids eating humans. But we weren't always the White Glove Society. Mortimer and some of the others have regressed to the old ways. They've taken many people over the last few months, but always from freeside or secluded places where they wouldn't be missed. It wasn't enough. Lately, they've gone for tourists here on the Strip, even in the hotel. I guess that's the hazard of a cannibal becoming a gourmet. It's hard to please a refined palate. What about Ted Gunderson? He's alive, as far as I know. We're trying to keep him fresh. Mortimer has special plans for him. The White Glove Society has a banquet every night at 7. It's in our private section. Mortimer wants to reintroduce humans into our cuisine. Since eating people is a crime we punish by death... He's going to do it in secret. After everyone has eaten it, he'll tell them. With no real way to punish everyone, in Mortimer's mind anyway, their minds will be open to the idea of eating people as a delicacy. Well, Ted's father is a wealthy man. With his resources, this should be easy to stop. That may be true, but I wouldn't recommend it. He's built a reputation, and it isn't for calmness and impartiality. He's not what he looks like. They call him Hurricane Heck. The man built his empire by hiring mercenaries to drive off the competition. Lately, he's been attacking our Brahmin suppliers so he can take over their business. He's the sort to pound in a nail with a wrecking ball. If you give him the whole story on this, he'd be liable to raise the entire hotel. And God knows what he'd do to the rest of the strip. Hmm, that is a good point. Um, wouldn't they punish Mortimer for his deception? They might, but to him, the legacy of returning to the old ways is worth his own life. I don't think he expects it, though. I don't either. Nothing is more important to the society than being on the cutting edge of New Vegas cuisine. Mortimer's idea will appeal to that need. He just has to get them over the taboo. And where are they keeping Ted? I already know this, but I want, want to see what Chauncey has to say. I don't know exactly. I wasn't in on it. I think some of them have stopped trusting me. But you can bet they're keeping him near the gourmand. Our chef, Philippe, has an obsession with fresh ingredients. It'd be back in the members-only section, so you'll have to be careful. Don't be seen, and more importantly, don't let them see Ted in the open. It's guarded both at the lobby entrance and in the access tunnels leading from the main restaurant. Is there anything you can do to help me? I could sponsor you as an honorary member, but I don't know that you've achieved the level of status that would gain the society's approval. Perhaps if you were to gain some more notoriety on the strip, we could get you in. Otherwise, you'll have to find some way to get inside quietly. It won't be easy, and it'll be harder still to get them out. Any suggestions on how to get Ted out? Hmm. Well, they'll all be sampling pre-war wines before the meal. Maybe it's as simple as drugging them. Although, that wouldn't stop any future kidnappings. You'd have to expose Mortimer, but he's going to confess anyway. What if... what if his revelation were a lie? What if no one had eaten human flesh but him? If you could somehow replace Philippe in the kitchen and serve a convincing substitute instead, you could walk Ted right through the middle of that room after Mortimer speaks. And then he'd have some explaining to do. Philippe has been trying to approximate the taste of human flesh for years. He must have a recipe somewhere. Okay, goodbye, Chauncey. So get rid of Philippe and cook for the banquet using his recipe for human flesh. Drug the wine at the White Glove Society. Okay. Let's plan on meeting again as soon as... Wait, did you hear something? Were you followed? Oh, crap. Sorry, Veronica. And Eddie. Formalware. Damn. Sorry, Chauncey. 
All right, guys. Well, this was an interesting little uh, side quest in here. I guess we're going to have to finish up next episode, though. We are out of time for today, so thank you so much for watching. Next episode, we will resolve this here. I don't know. It's going to be rough. We have to get in the kitchen and cook a replacement meal, and then uh, I can smuggle out Ted during the meal. But uh, it's going to be interesting. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.